we are looking at classification here and we are going to particularly look at text classification so we have a discrete set of predefined classes and we want to uh, basically predict the class of a new document so here's an example of document classification let's say you want to build a classifier for a set of computer science journal papers and you have a set of six predefined classes corresponding to different fields within computer science so you have a class for machine learning a class for planning a class for semantics a class for garbage collection a class for multimedia and GUI now the training data that you're going to provide to a machine is going to be a set of papers that serve as typical examples for each of these six classes okay so this is just a toy example of one single paper falling into the machine learning class okay so the paper is going to have uh, words like learning intelligence algorithm reinforcement network and so on yeah yeah so what I was saying was uh, there are a set of six classes over here and we want to categorize a new document that has not been seen before into one of these six classes these are six predefined classes and in the training phase you will take a set of labeled examples for each class okay so you'll take a paper from the machine learning area of computer science and label it with the class ML similarly you can take a paper that falls into the planning uh, area within AI so both machine learning and planning are broadly within artificial intelligence semantics and garbage collection are within programming languages and multimedia and GUI falls within the field of human computer interaction so these are broader areas within uh, computer science and you can have a hierarchy of classes over here but for simplicity we are going to assume that we just have a set of six discrete classes no notion of a hierarchy uh, even though there is a notion of a hierarchy here we are not going to rely on any kind of a hierarchy uh, to build an algorithm so we are just going to treat them as six disjoint classes so that's what the training data is you'll take a set of labeled papers falling into each of these classes the machine will learn to recognize patterns for each class it will learn to associate it will form associations between certain combinations of words and the class that the paper is tagged with so that when a new paper comes in it will be able to accurately classify that paper into one of these six categories the other assumption we are making here is that these classes don't overlap so in reality there will be some overlap right for example uh, you can have a, a paper talking about a machine learning approach to garbage collection so that would be a paper that would fall into both these classes but for the purpose of this lecture we are not going to assume any kind of a hierarchy uh, and we are not going to assume that there is any overlap between the classes Here are some more examples of classification. Um, as I said, you can classify news articles into different classes, finance, sports, business, and so on. Uh, you can also classify articles as editorial articles, movie reviews, news, and so on. You can classify reviews about a product into three classes, a neutral review, a positive review, and a negative review you can categorize documents as uh, having adult language or not having adult language so documents that are restricted age restricted and documents that are not you can have classes corresponding to uh, different languages in which the documents are written, uh, written and you can have classes corresponding to whether a particular document is a spam document or not so you can think of a variety of problems uh, where classification is helpful 
So what are the methods for classification? The simplest way in which you can think of classifying documents is manual classification. And that's what is used by... I hear some noise. Is Does anybody have a question? Oh, so you as a, um, uh, someone who wants to build an application will decide what classes, uh, what, what sort of problem you want to tackle, right? So for example, let's say you want to build a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a spam detector, okay, for email. Then clearly you're going to have two classes, uh, one corresponding to spam mail, one corresponding to, 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 to ordinary mail. You can probably have more refined classes, okay, like for example, uh, classes corresponding to mails from family and friends, another class for mails coming from, let's say, your colleagues at work, uh, or, or work related, I mean, not just coming from particular individuals, but the content of the mail pertains to uh, work, right, otherwise you can just take email addresses and map them to different folders but you can think of a more sophisticated uh, classification problem where the content of your mail uh, will govern what class it falls into not just uh, you know the email address likewise if you want to you know have some kind of a, uh, a a porn detector for example to 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 throw away documents that are have adult con content or pornography you you can have you'll, you'll again have two kinds of classes for that and again, this doesn't apply necessarily just to text. It can apply to images, movies, all kinds of uh, content. And outside of uh, web search also, you can have, you know, scientific data. You know, let's say you have data about, uh, let's say, the X-ray image. Okay, uh, based on the X-ray image of, let's say, a particular tumor, you want to classify that tumor as benign or malignant. So you can have classification problems in medicine, uh, where looking at the image you should be able to predict whether that image corresponds to a particular uh, medical condition or not so that will uh, the, the classes will depend on what problem uh, you want to solve what kind of classification problem you want to solve 